A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our reception among you was not without effect. Rather, after we had suffered and been insolently treated, as you know, in Philippi, we drew courage through our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much struggle. Our exhortation was not from delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception. But as we were judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that is how we speak, not as trying to please men, but rather God who judges our hearts. Nor indeed did we ever appear with flattering speech, as you know, or with a pretext for greed. God is witness. Nor did we seek praise from men, either from you or from others, although we were able to impose our weight as apostles of Christ. Rather, we were gentle among you, as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved, had you become to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. O oh Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Yes, sir. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know the whole of it. Behind me and before, you hem me in and rest your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. You have searched me and know me, Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes on mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment, mercy, and fidelity. These you should have done without neglecting the others, blind guides, who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean the outside of cup and dish, but inside full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. From this excerpt from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, we can learn two things. I think one is positive and the other is negative. The first is, by the example of St. Paul, to quote uh, Winston Churchill, never, 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 never surrender. He went from place to place to place, no matter what the reception was finally that he would get. And as he alludes to here, he was grabbed in Philippi, he and, and Silas, publicly whipped without law, in spite of the fact that they were, or at least he was anyhow, a Roman citizen, and it was against the law for that to happen thrown into jail, et cetera, et cetera, he goes from there to Thessalonica, preaching the word. So we've seen it in the first missionary journey also, that he goes from Antioch and Pisidia, he goes to Lydda, he goes to all these different places. You know, he just, he's, he's going to go, he's Lystra, uh, 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 wherever else he happens to go, he's going to go there, okay? Success here or not, 
He goes to another place. Success there or not, he goes to another place. So what we learn for ourselves today is perseverance in living and bringing the good news to others. Okay, perseverance. It isn't really a big question of how many people we convert. It really isn't. It's a matter of the faithfulness of our own witness. So that's one thing we learn from St. Paul. Now, I think we learn something perhaps negatively, okay? If this is what we should do, there's another dimension of what we see in, in the career of St. Paul, I think, that suggests what we shouldn't do. It's very, very hard for me in reading the Acts of the Apostles and the allusions that we have to those events like today's without thinking that one of the biggest things Paul did was argue with a lot of anger. You know, he ticked people off over and over and over again in different places. You know, and I can just see him in the synagogue saying, you idiots, you're so stupid, why can't you see this? It's not usually the best way to evangelize, okay? So what we want to do is not really, really yell and scream. We don't want to be in your face in any kind of way. We want to be faith-filled. We want to be able to live the good news and to be evangelists by the quality of our life and our discipleship rather than by the, the violence or the volume of our anger or of our debating. Not usually a helpful thing. I say that simply because it is inconceivable to me otherwise that St. Paul constantly was being thrown out of towns, constantly being thrown into jail, constantly being whipped and done with whatever, you know? What a guy. We learn from him to be more gentle as he suggests here. We were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. That's nice. And he can say, some, he can say things like that to other communities too. But when he gets his dander up, he gets his dander up. And we can see that. Let's not follow that example, but let's follow the example of St. Paul who wanted to be not only all things to all people, but in all places at the same time. We, in our place, can bring the good news by our witness. Let us stand and pray.